We are now joined by Dr. Wumi Sadiq, who is a distinguished professor and chair of the Department of Chemistry and Environmental Science at NJIT. Good to see you, doctor. Thank you, Steve. Nice to having me. Um, our pleasure. Doctor, in getting ready for the show, the term biosensors kept coming up. What is a biosensor bio and why is it especially relevant to our lives at this moment? A biosensor is a small size device that um, would typically uh, be used to provide information about the presence or the level of any uh, biological molecule. A good example is what the diabetic patients will use on a daily basis to tell uh, about the level of glucose in their blood. Uh, Biosensors are especially useful in our lives at this time because we're dealing with uh, an invisible uh, virus that is, you know, kept everybody um, at home. And so biosensors are good for uh, telling us the presence about the virus as well as the level of the viral load in human samples. But doctor, you also, you look at wastewater and that tells us what? So um, rather than looking at individual clinical samples like blood or nasal swab, um, biosensors can help us look at the community level about the uh, presence of this virus in sewage, for example. Why is that relevant? That's relevant because uh, we can use uh, the wastewater, for example, to uh, target a particular area. We can use that to look at the population uh, level of this virus. In a, in a particular location. Dr. Sadiq, were these bio sensors, were they around and being used pre-COVID-19 or because I'm a student of innovation and I'm fascinated by how it comes about? Um, Many say well, innovation, uh, necessity is the mother of invention. I don't know how much of it's a cliche or how much it's true. Was this around before or did it come about because, or in part because of COVID? No, thousands of have been around for over 50 years. Uh, we've used them in many, many uh, areas of human uh, endeavors. Uh, for example, uh, you, you have biosensors for, uh, you know, testing if you um, have alcohol in your blood, biosensors are good for determining the level of alcohol. You know, some of those monitors that, uh, you know, law enforcement agents will use um, some of them about sensors. So, so it's interesting. This whole area of environmental chemistry, critically important for a variety of reasons. However, what I'm curious about, and I actually spoke to the president of NJIT, uh, Joel Bloom, Dr. Joel Bloom is one of our board of trustee members. We've worked with NGIT on a whole range of higher ed initiatives and trying to learn what's going on in the world of research. But what I'm curious about is this, environmental chemistry, does environmental chemistry become that much more important in the age of a global pandemic? Absolutely. Because uh, in the age of global uh, pandemic, uh, you have need to monitor the environment to monitor air, to monitor water, uh, to look at wastewater, to look at sewage and sediments. And so uh, environmental chemistry is always uh, important even in this time that we're in. You know, it's interesting because I know you're doing some of that work in Newark, New Jersey right now. And we've had Mayor Raz Baraka on many times and also check out our website, steveadubato.org for a very in-depth um, comprehensive interview we did with Newark Mayor Roz Baraka. Much of it was about these topics, public health in Newark. Is it critically important, Dr. Sadiq, that you share your findings from a lot of this research using biosensors with government officials, particularly public health officials, so they can then execute policy and programs? That is the, that's the essence of it. Uh, when we do research in this, uh, in this space, 
uh, we provide information for public health uh, that would be of interest to policy making, um, to protect human health, to protect the environment. So it is critical that uh, we are able to liaise and uh, present information in such a way that they understand what is at stake. And so finally, for those who, as we do this program on the 22nd of October, a lot of things will happen between now and the end of the calendar year. For those who question a lot of the science, fair to say you question the science at one's own risk or society's own risk? I, I would say so. I think uh, science has a lot, uh, has done a lot to protect us and will continue to protect us. And so by ignoring science, we are basically, um, you know, endangering our own health. I think it's important that we, we listen to the scientists. Yes, well said. And Dr. Uh, Wumi Sadiq, distinguished professor and chair of the Department of Chemistry and Environmental Sciences at the New Jersey Institute of Technology, NJIT. Dr. Sadiq, thank you so much for uh, joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you for, uh, for having me. You got it. I'm Steve Adubato. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding has been provided by Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, PSCNG, MD Advantage Insurance Company, ADP, the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey, the North Ward Center, Johnson and Johnson, NJ Best and by the Adler Aphasia Center. Promotional support provided by CIANJ and Commerce Magazine. And by NJ On Air. Choosing a new family doctor can be confusing. Check with your health insurer to see which physicians near you participate with your plan. Find out which hospitals the doctor uses and who covers when the doctor is away. And remember to schedule an appointment with your new doctor in advance to fill out any paperwork without the added stress of being sick.